This video is an introduction for how to script game logic using AngelScript code. The overall concepts are the same as with Visual Scripts and C++ code. Script code acts like a custom component and is executed on a game object. Components typically communicate with each other through messages. Messages can be sent and handled by C++ and script code, which makes it possible to mix and match the two. For this example, I'll use the basic FPS sample project as a starting point, since it already contains the most fundamental game functionality. For a playthrough of the demo level, see the link in the description. I'll give a quick overview over many things. For details of specific aspects, please consult the documentation. To create a scripted object, point at a place in your level, right-click and select Create Object Here. In the context menu, choose Script Component. This creates a new game object with a script component attached to it. We now need to add a new script asset for the component to use. Next to Script Class, click the three dots and select Create New Asset. Choose a name and location and make sure the asset type is the desired one. Now you have a script asset where you can write code. However, the built-in editor only provides basic syntax highlighting. The editing experience is much better with Visual Studio Code. However, for this workflow, it is necessary to put the script code into separate text files. For source, switch to from file. Under source file, click the three dots and select create angel script. Then choose a file name and location. Now you can click the button in the toolbar to open the script in Visual Studio Code. Make sure you have the extension AngelScript Language Server installed. This is a really awesome extension that elevates the editing experience of AngelScript code to a whole new level. In your script, add a new class and derive it from EasyAngelScript class. For this quick demo, we'll implement the function onSimulationStarted which is run once when we press play. Save the script and go back to the editor. Back in the asset, make sure to set the name that you gave your class. Then save the asset. If there's an error in your script code, the error message will tell you in which file and line to check. Here we forgot a semicolon. So we fix the script and save the file again. Back in the asset, the script already got recompiled and can now be used. When we go back to our scene and press play, we can see the output in the log. Now let's take a closer look at what functionality is available in AngelScript. Use go to definition on the base class. This opens the file as.predefined, which is automatically generated and contains all declarations that are available in AngelScript code. For example, here we can see that we can call getOwner from within our script class to get the easy game object on which the script is running. On easy game objects, we can find all the functions for moving objects around, retrieving or creating components, sending messages or finding child objects. Similarly, we can also access the easy world, through which we can create and delete objects, access the game clock and random number generator, check whether objects still exist and also send messages. Now let's look at an example how scripts can interact. In this very simple scene, I have set up a bridge between two platforms. At startup, the bridge moves down. I can look at the button and then use the E key to activate it, which will then toggle the bridge. The bridge is just a group of objects with a slider component that makes it move. The button object is a prefab that can be reused in many places. It has a parameter which is used to identify what the button is for. The button uses its own script code, which we will look at later. For now it is sufficient to know that when the button is pressed, it will broadcast an event. This event is delivered to the parent object of the button. 
However, here the button is on the top level, so there is no parent that could handle it. Instead, we have an object called level logic. This object has its own script. Note that the script component has the option handle global events enabled. This is very important because it means that the event that the button couldn't deliver to any parent will instead be delivered to this script. If we look at the level script, we see that it implements a message handler for the message type easy message trigger triggered. That is the message type that the button emits. The script first checks what the purpose of the trigger message is. Next, it uses a global key to find the bridge object and on the bridge object, it looks for the slider component. If successful, it just tells the slider object to move. The component automatically stops at the end and toggles the direction, so nothing else is necessary to do here. As you can see, the level logic is very simple. It would be straightforward to add further buttons and wire them up in different ways. To get a better understanding, let's now have a look at how the button works. On the root node of the button prefab, we have a static physics actor, so that we can find this object in the world with a ray cast. There's also a script, which we will look at shortly. The rest of the button prefab is really just decoration. A base plate and a separate mesh with a slider, so that we can animate the button in a simple way. The button script looks like this. It only contains an event handler for the generic event message. This event is sent by the player object to the object that the player looks at when the E key gets pressed. The script checks that the player wanted to use something. And if that's the case, the script searches for the child object called slider to trigger the button animation. It also starts playing a sound. Though the more important aspect is that it ultimately broadcasts the trigger triggered message. It sets the message string to the button name. The name is an exposed parameter, which means that the user of the script can pass in different values. Note that the script doesn't use send message here, but broadcast event message. You can only send a message to a concrete object or group of objects. However, since the button object should be reusable for many things, it doesn't know the recipient of the message. Therefore, instead it uses the broadcast mechanism which means that the message is delivered either to the next best parent object above the button or, as in our case, to a component that is registered as a global event handler. Finally, let's have a look at the player script to see how it interacts with the button. The player prefab is easily the most complicated object in any game. We won't dive into how it works exactly. Just be aware that on the root node there's a character controller component which we use to move through the level, an input component, which we need to get information about key presses, and then, of course, our script component to actually tie it all together for the player logic. Let's take a very rough look at this script. This class uses the update function to get executed every frame. In update character movement, it reads the key press information from the input component and forwards this to the character controller component. In the update interactions function, it implements the mechanic for grabbing objects and shooting things. Down here we have the case for when the player presses the E key to interact with something. If the player is carrying an object, drop it. Otherwise, try to interact with it. First, we retrieve the object on which the camera is attached. Then we use the physics engine to cast a ray from the camera position 1.5 meters forwards. If the ray hit an object, we prepare a generic event message with the message text set to use. Then we send that message to the hit object as an event. That means the message is sent to the object on which the physics collider exists but it gets delivered to the nearest parent object on which there is an event handler for this message type. As we've seen previously, that event handler exists in the button script. This way the player can interact with any object that reacts to this event and the player script doesn't need to know anything about their functionality. So to summarize, when the player presses the E key, the player script makes a raycast to find a physical object in front of the camera it then sends an event message to that object. 
If the object has an event handler for it, like our button, it can react accordingly. Here our button plays its animation and then also broadcasts another event. Since the button has no parent object to handle the event, it is forwarded to the level script, which is said to be a global event handler. The level script then looks at the string in the event to determine what to do, for example to open doors or to spawn objects. Thank <laughs> you.